Hello, in this lesson we are going to look at another amazing use of blockchain and that is in the retail sector. So whether you're buying clothes or TVs or anything, doesn't matter whether it's a physical store, a brick and mortar store or online because all of these systems, all of these different types of stores, these vendors, they generally are connected to the internet and they track stuff digitally and via the internet so they are primed for blockchain implementation the first thing i'm going to cover is a concept this is an amazing concept called the supply chain ledger and if you don't know what a ledger is it's basically a database that blockchain uses I've got a video on that so feel free to go and check that out Actually, I don't like that. I'm going to put a rectangle around this. And now let's cover the different aspects of a blockchain ledger. So at its core, it allows you to track where products are. So in two words, it's an audit trail. Audit trials go beyond just accounting. They're just a way of tracking everything and where everything has been and how it has come to being in that location, whether it's digital or physical. And on top of that, it allows you to track the materials that go into the product. So we can have the where they came from. So where did the material where they came from so that includes let's use a different color that includes stuff like the country it includes the company responsible for potentially mining it or processing it and it includes the people potentially as well and any other sort of Actually, it can also include the sort of the distribution. So how that was actually, how, let's say, so if it came from this country, how did it go from this country to this company? Then eventually, how did it come into being into this particular product? So that's where it came from. You can also check where they went before going into the product so maybe it was a material so maybe the material was used in another product in another product i'm not saying that's a bad thing obviously depending on the material on the product and let's see what you're paying for it and what it is that may not be an issue but it may so to be able to see that and truly know that the materials that have gone into, I don't know, a drug or a food item or your phone, for example, is original or it is actually brand new, that is a very, very cool concept. And if it is used, how has it been used? Has it been used in 20 different devices? So if it's a phone, for example, maybe it's a screen that's used in there again that's okay but how do you know that he hasn't been in 10 other phones that have been in let's say 20 different countries with different climates and in all these different environments so that might actually change what you think about buying it so actually just instances it's appeared in and also the different device types. So maybe somebody's trying to put it in a phone that wasn't valid or just what was known not to fully support that screen. And as a result, you're thinking, no, nah, I don't want this phone because it's got this use component that I think has essentially been either tampered with or it's just not being used very well. So you can also track who made each part, who made each part so just briefly touched on that at the top so if we have a so this is a phone <laughs> this is screen on it so from that we might have the screen 
you might have a mic, camera, storage, battery, and let's just say a phone has just this. Obviously, we'll probably need other components as well, but like the main board, logic board, motherboard, whatever you want to call it. But let's just say it has this. So we can track who made this part. And on top of that, we can keep going down this audit trail. So the screen isn't going to be just found, you know, in the ground and we're going to dig it up unless we're, unless we're at some sort of landfill. So what did, what was the screen made out of? What was the mic made out of? And it doesn't have to be three items. It could be one, it could be two, it could be a million. And what was that made out of? What was that made out of? You can see where we're going with this. What was that made out of? What was that made out of? And let's say we eventually get to the point where we find this is where it was originally mined from the ground. And you can see the actual, the actual route that that has gone down. And this would also include any devices that it's been used in the past. So that is an amazing sort of prospect of tracking who made each part so overall it confirms overall confirms the quality of the product because you know where it's been you know what what went into it who made that who transported it how those product like materials were made and essentially the same questions regarding those products as well. It also helps reduce counterfeiting because we can see where all the products have gone in a device. So we can see, oh, this isn't actually a legitimate product or the overall phone might for the most part be, but this one core component isn't. And the fake component they use maybe has a shorter lifespan than the average one used in the real one this can help reduce lost goods because you can you know track it at all stages and that's the same with materials or whether you're a customer and just buying the phone regardless of what stage you're at whether you're in the production in the mining in the distribution in the after just the consumer side of it you can reduce lost goods and overall it also has in viral mental transparency so you can see what country was involved what materials where the materials came from maybe it was wood and it's from an endangered rainforest or it's skin of an animal and it's of an endangered species and otherwise you would not have known that and that might actually change the way you perceive the item or the way you even if you're going to buy the item so that is the supply chain ledger so that's a cool concept but there's more to the retail uses of blockchain so imagine food so food drink so when i'm saying food i'm just saying consumables in general so like food drink pizza whatever so you can obviously track it as we are as we've already discussed over here we can track the ingredients that have gone into it potentially track the machinery that was used to make it and the parts that went into that machinery so it's crazy how much we could potentially be tracking but beyond that we could track this is something that doesn't come to mind but it's the temperature along the way so maybe what you're consuming right now or what you'll be eating has actually gone all around the world and it's gone from different countries it's gone to different transportation methods it's gone through different people different companies different storage facilities so check being able to see that the temperature along the way has been the right temperature it will in in Sure. Ensure 
the ingredients ingredients and product so because like I said it's essentially the same sort of features when you're just going down the chain so whether it's the product or the ingredients that made up the product or those ingredients or those ingredients and to make sure that they were stored in the right condition so it goes actually goes beyond temperature as well so maybe it's only good to be stored in a container that only has five other items in it so you can see that as well so it's just the actual storage conditions so you can also through checking tracking each part of it and the material so materials in food would be ingredients for example and the actual machinery that you use, uses it you can check you can check where each ingredient has been for allergy checking and that's a really powerful concept because you see all the time if you go into a supermarket you pick a bag of something up and even though it doesn't contain nuts it or like the actual product is a nut it'll say may contain nuts and that's because it's been in a facility that has had nut based products in there and as a result just to make sure and this I'm pretty positive that they've they started putting it on labels. It's been on labels for a while now, but because there was a case where it wasn't mentioned, somebody had a really bad reaction, and as a result, they potentially got sued. But if you could fully check, not just if there was a nut, what potential nut was in that facility. So maybe you're only allergic to peanuts, for example, which is quite common and you don't mind all the nuts and you check the facility of let's say a chocolate bar and you see that it doesn't and never has had any peanuts in there it looks like yeah i'm happy with that because even though it may contain nuts it's going to be non-peanut based nuts so you're happy with that so it's great for allergy checking so a recap so overall overall it saves time and this is done by accelerating and automating transactions and it removes costs and reduces overhead these two are very closely linked it helps reduce waste reduces fraud and and counterfeiting all of this leads to increase trust it's a increase in trust between parties whether that's us as a consumer and let's say walmart or amazon as a retailer or the retailer and the people or the company the retail the manufacturers of the item and maybe the manufacturers of the item and the people who provided the actual goods and then the transportation and also us and those other parts as well because we can see where it's been how it's been handled who's handled it so it increases trust between all parties all parties it also has provides accurate or I should say more accurate tracking of delivery of goods this for the most part is actually pretty well done in the current system it's one of those things that I'm always surprised by that considering how even though quite a lot of it is automated but how much 
human involvement there is to shipping stuff, what, regardless of what it is, that it, for the most part, goes really smoothly, even during holidays, so like Christmas, for example, there, there used to be a time where you used to get really bad during those holidays, now it's just a bit of a rush, you can, you can just have delays, but, and you're generally secured as well. It also helps provide... I've just changed colour for honestly no apparent reason. Proof of ownership. So you can see this person did actually truly own that phone, so they are they're not selling me a stolen phone. So that's a really cool thing as well, because you I'm sure you've been somewhere or tried to buy something, maybe seen in a newspaper that somebody's selling a phone and it's like half the price that everyone else is selling it for. And you're thinking, am I getting a good deal? Or am I getting ripped off because there's something wrong with it? Or is it stolen? Obviously, if, if it's the former one, great, you, you definitely want it. If, if it's the latter two, you, you can definitely track it to do proof of ownership and potentially even find out if there's something wrong with it by tracking the actual components that have gone into it. So that's a pretty cool concept as well. And this will reduce running out of room here, but almost done, reduce warranty disputes, because you can truly see, okay, this person actually did buy it, though it is theirs, it has been only, with, let's say, within this country, so maybe the product is only eligible for return or repair if it's only been stayed within the country that it was bought in, for example. So that is another cool thing, is the, it'll help reduce warranty disputes. So many companies have some sort of loyalty based system and it will, it will basically provide a more accurate way of tracking loyalty points. I just have two more points that I want to cover now. It can help eliminate receipts because I'm sure you've been to a store, you've bought something and they're like, make sure you keep that receipt because otherwise without that, we cannot return it, even if the product is, let's say if you go to Walmart and it's a Walmart product, they'll say, yeah, we can't have it at all unless you have the receipt. I'm not saying Walmart is like that, I'm just saying you know, Walmart as an example. So it'll help eliminate receipts and you wouldn't need a receipt because you can see, track the item and say, okay, it's actually a six months of warranty left. Its components have this X amount of warranty left because imagine just being able to type in the model number of a phone and just like a chart coming up of all the different components that went in, went into it, all of the different warranty statuses of those components, who is actually responsible for those warranties. Because even you as a consumer, you might not know, you might you might not know, but I've even had to deal with companies like retailers that they don't truly know who should be handling the actual repair or the fixing of it, like should we do it or does the consumer have to send it retailer but with this we will we'll know for certain who should be handling it and to celebrate us almost doing this I will use a different colour, this sort of pinky red colour and this can also help emerging markets so emerging markets that don't have conventional payment systems because there are countries around the world and or places within a certain country maybe a village that doesn't have a bank system that doesn't have a conventional money based system and it will help them track it, it will help them get hold of these items because you'll find you'll go to these places that don't have certain basic levels of economics but they have phones and through 4G, 3G or even 2G access they have access to the internet as well so it will help emerging markets and this is definitely going to be one of the crazy use cases that I think will help accelerate blockchain is you'll get markets that don't have much of a choice but to adopt it because they don't really have an alternative. And we as the rest of the world will see how amazing this implementation is. 
and will want to implement it and it will already be done there'll probably be some sort of startup in africa or in india or a certain as a certain part of china for example and i think a lot of the blockchain innovation will occur from emerging markets so that's it for the use cases of blockchain on retail it's been a long video i know feel free to ask any questions you may have go over the video again check out all the different aspects of blockchain in the retail sector the supply chain ledger food the overall benefits and as usual thank you for watching and i look forward to seeing you in the next amazing blockchain video